to be good to be here and good to see you guys. Um, <clears throat> Romans chapter one. I've taught out of this before. I actually have a few lessons out of this particular. This, it's really the same the same passage, but <clears throat> um, Pastor asked me to just give um, a short um, a lesson on on prayer. Now, <clears throat> I am. Um, uh, I'm not an expert at, in prayer. Um, it's quite challenging, actually. Um, and so um, just take it as, a, as notes that I'm sharing with you uh, and not necessarily this is how I do it. Um, and so it was something that I've uh, been challenged about for quite some time. <clears throat> so hopefully uh, uh, for yourself as well. Um, uh, Romans chapter 1 and verse number 8, uh, Paul tells the Romans, <clears throat> uh, First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all, that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. Uh, for God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers, making request if by any means now at length I might have a prosperous journey by the will of God to come unto you. For I long to see you that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift to the end ye may be established. That is, that I may be comforted together with you by the mutual faith, uh, both of you and me. And so uh, when I think about prayer... Um, uh, there's quite a few questions that come up in, in my mind and um, uh, why is it so difficult? Um, shouldn't it be more effective in my life? I mean, shouldn't it be like a superpower? I mean, God has said if, uh, if you desire something and if, if you ask, you shall receive. I mean, it's that simple. And so that doesn't necessarily work in my life. And so why not? And so all these questions I have in my mind, and perhaps maybe you have in your mind, and it's unanswered, um, and uh, probably even after this, this lesson, you'll st it's still unanswered. But um, uh, one, I wonder why, uh, yeah, why, why is it so difficult? Why, why is Wednesday night uh, very sparse uh, every, every Wednesday, or almost every Wednesday? It's a hit and miss, and, <clears throat> um, and so uh, looking inward, um, I started to just uh, kind of process these, these questions, and I, I came up with some, some thoughts here. And in Romans chapter um, 1, um, we'll get well, two, two or three principles out of this. But um, the, the first thing I wanted to kind of point your attention to is um, <clears throat> when we're talking about prayer, um, I was challenged to be specific about your desired state. Be specific about your desired state. Now, probably not, it's not um, uh, new to you, but um, let me show you what Paul was saying. In, um, in verse, uh, let's see, in verse 9, he says, uh, verse 10, he tells Ro the Romans, making request, or making request to who? Uh, to God. If by any means now at length I might have a prosperous journey by the will of God to come unto you, uh, actually, in verse 9, at the very end, it says that without ceasing, I might, ma ma might make mention of you always in my prayers. So he's talking about prayers. He's talking about talking to God. <clears throat> and he says, for I long to see you that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift to the end you may be established. And he's, he's uh, kind of uh, deliberating, hey, I'm praying something specific. Um, uh, well, it's it's general in this in this in verse eleven. I, I long to see you. I want I'm praying that I get to see you, that you will be established. Um, that's pretty generic. That's pretty general. And really, for all of us, we pray to that level of granularity. Man, pray that he pray that um, that he's established or she's established or that I'm established. Uh, bless. Bless this ministry, bless our life, um, uh, make us better, uh, whatever, gen generalities. But notice what uh, the sentence doesn't end. 
Uh, for I long to see that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift to the end ye may be established, semicolon. And then he says, that is that I may be comforted together with you by the mutual faith, both of you and me. He made something that was general, more granular, and more specific. Be specific about your desired state. When you're praying to bless that person, um, what do you mean? I challenge you when you pray, uh, even tonight, and you say, bless the missionaries. Add, add that, the, the, the next two words. That is, Lord, and be specific. Um, 2 Thessalonians 3 and verse number 1. Finally, brethren, Paul tells the Thessalonians, pray for us. For what? That the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified even as it is with you. So there's a benchmark here. He says... Um, uh, pray, hey Thessalonians, pray for us. A lot of people say, hey, may pray for me. Have you ever went back to that person okay, about like specifically what? What is the that is that I can pray for you about? Um, in, in this verse, Paul says, let uh, pray for us that the word of God may have free course and be glorified. And we could pray that, but still general. But look at what the measure and the metric is, um, the standard is, even as it is with you. Hey, um, hey Thessalonians, I, I'm going somewhere else. Pray um, that the word of God has free course and that God will be glorified just like you see yourselves. Like that level, that's what I want as well. And so um, be specific and um, uh, be specific in your desired state. So when you say, when you're praying for a new job, what about your job? Help me have, let me, Lord, give me a better job. That is what? Better pay, better schedule. I was challenged uh, with this as I was moving back to Australia. God, give me a job. And I have learned that if I'm just general, um, then I, I might get what I want, something just general. But if I pray for something specific, maybe I'll get something specific. Remember, um, God says that, uh, God, uh, God says uh, more than we can ask or think. So my challenge is like, whatever I think, I'm just going to think big and God will just have to bless on top of that, um, more than what I can think about. Um, but what about the job do you do you want? God, give give me a job when I get to Sydney. I want I want X amount, Lord. I think this is what I'll, I'll need to survive and to 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 live comfortably. God, I want to I want a schedule that doesn't break my break our, our, our lifestyle, and I want to be available for my kids and be present. I don't want to have this and that. Be specific. Um, Paul says. Um, to the end, ye may be established, and he says, when, when, when I mean established, that is, that I might be comforted together by the mutual faith of both you and me. So when he tells the, Rome, the Romans, hey, I'm praying that I get to come to you so that you'll be established. Well, what do you mean established? Well, what I mean is, what that looks like is, I want to get to a point where you're established so that we have a mutual faith. My faith is impacting you, which is what is the case right now, Romans. I'm just kind of, I'm, in, I'm investing in you. I'm inputting into you. I'm, I'm, I'm dis distributing to you. I'm teaching you. But I want you to be established. And what that means is I want to get you to a point where, where our faith is mutual. You're impacting me. Uh, you're blessing me. You're teaching me now. That's what I mean by established. And so go that second, go that second mile um, and be specific about your desired state. You, 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 um, we pray about uh, healing. We pray about um, if we can uh, go over here or go there or travel here or we pray for an event to happen. Um, what about that event? Pray for our anniversary um, that it will be a blessing uh, what does that mean to you? 
what do you want from God in our anniversary Sunday that had just passed a few weeks ago? Um, do you want people to be saved? You want people, God, have, we want five people to walk the aisle and, and, and be saved. Um, be specific um, in about your desired state. Now, go to, back to Romans 1. Um, so I feel like a lot of the times we're not motivated to pray because God bless, bless my life. What does that even mean? Well, God, I, I want more money. <laughs> and I'm not trying to preach a, a prosperity gospel. I'm, I'm just making a point. Be specific. Um, and we'll get to, we'll get to um, uh, those, uh, those kinds of things and what to, what to pray for here in a, in a second. But um, be specific in your desired state. Um, in Romans 1, in verse 8, uh, Paul says to the Romans, First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all, that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit, in the gospel of his son. And so the second thing I'd want you to take note of is not only be specific about your desired state, what you're praying about, the state that you desire, um, be sanctified in your desiring state. See, do you understand the difference? Um, be specific in your desired state, but be sanctified in, the desire, in your desiring state, the state in which you are desiring. I was, uh, we, were, we were doing discipleship with the kids. We were talking about prayer, and we we're talking about this very thing. Um, a lot of the times when you're praying for a Lamborghini, you're not necessarily in, your, in the right desiring state because the state you're in is uh, a covetous state. You understand? The state in which you desire um, is not correct. And I think... Uh, a lot, the challenge, and I think this is the challenge for a lot of us, is as we're praying, perhaps we're not uh, praying very specific because in our desired state, for our desired state, because we're not praying in the right desiring state. Um, Paul says, as he was writing this, he says, for, for God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his son. See the state in which he was in? his spiritual state, his mental state, he was in a state of, um, of serving with his spirit. Um, in James 4 and verse 3, and a few verses here as we, um, uh, that you'll be familiar with, uh, uh, ye ask and receive not. Why? Why? Because ye ask amiss that ye may consume it upon your lusts. Your desiring state is wrong. Therefore, you ask amiss. Um, 1 John and uh, 1 John 3 and verse 22. It is so weird not hearing pages. But um, for, uh, 1 John 3, 22. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him. Why? Because we keep his commandments. There's a, there's a premise here that in our state, we're, we're keeping God's commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Again, your desire ring state needs to be in alignment with what God expects. Um, Psalm 66, 18. Psalm 66, 18. You know the verse. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Your state in which you are asking uh, is amiss. You're, you're, there's iniquity in that state that you're in. Uh, Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11 and verse number 6. And again, a very familiar passage. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So, be specific about your desired state. Be sanctified in your desiring state. Um, if I was going to illustrate, if if this state that I was in, like uh, on the on the ground, 
is, is the, des uh, the desiring state that I'm in. And, and perhaps this represents um, not being right with God. Maybe um, there's lust there. Maybe uh, there's iniquity. Maybe there's disobedience. Maybe there's covetousness. Maybe there's anger. Maybe whatever it is. As I'm in this desiring state, I am praying for a specific desired state. Um, but God says, and what I'm trying to get, get at is get to a place where you're in the right desiring state. And let's say that this represents being right with God and you're obeying and you're, uh, you're, you're trying to do, to do right. Now Now you're in a different state. You're in a, the right desiring state. You're, you're serving God in, in, in spirit. And so now when you pray, um, your desired state is going to be different because you're, you're praying from a different, different um, I don't want to keep using the word state, but do you understand what I'm saying? Um, and so that's, that's the rub, that's the difficulty, is making sure that we are in alignment with God as we pray and we are in harmony with God so that as we pray, it's, it's effective. So now, if we're in the right desiring state and we're more specific about the desired state we're in, perhaps we'll see more of our prayers answered. Um, so, um, so those are the two things that, uh, in my mind, that have been a challenge to me. Um, and so I, I have those two things in my mind, um, two, two observations. Th the third thing that I wanted to bring bring before you is if if your prayers aren't effective um, perhaps what you need to do is make your desiring state your desired state um, so forget about what is whatever it is that you're trying to pray about focus your attention now your focus on What's my, my desired state is to be there. My desired state is to be in that, the right desiring state. And this is where I'm at now, uh, uh, personally. Um, Philippians and verse, uh, Philippians 1 and verse 9, the Bible says, And this I pray, that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment, that ye may approve things that are excellent, that ye may be sincere and without offense to the day of Christ. Paul's praying about the Philippians for them to be in that state of mind and state of, of spirit. Um, so kind of, kind of combine this together, I've started to, and, and I encourage you to, to do this. Yes, maybe there's some things that I am praying about. Um, and I'm trying to be more specific about that, but a lot of my, a lot of, a lot of our prayers need to, to be directed to um, our desiring state. Now, when you pray about that desiring state, do point number one: be specific in the desired state. Be specific. Um, God, help me to be. When we say, "Look, God, help me." Be a better Christian. What, what, what do you, that is what? What, what? what do you want? Um, what about God? Help me be a better Christian. Help me be more spiritual. That is every sermon, God. Can you just do something? I, I want to be, be challenged every service, every sermon, when, when pastor preaches or when I come, come into, it doesn't matter who's preaching, God. Um, I want to be in that state, and what I mean by that is every time I hear a message, I want it to affect me. Like, I want it to be changed. I want to walk out um, different. Um, maybe, God, when someone comes and approaches me the next time, help me absorb the criticism and the, 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 um, the rebuke without being offended. Like, God, I want to be able to learn a new, something new about me when someone comes and tells me something new, and I want to turn that, away, turn that around and, and, and make that a positive in my life. Um, 
God, help me to have a passion for souls. What I mean by that is, help me have a burden, like a like, man, that my, I am I am really concerned about my neighbor, and God, help me to get in that place where I am desiring the right things. Um, I want to see myself. God, help me with my anger. What 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 do you want? What 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 does that look like? And be very specific, God, the next time my kids do this or my wife or my husband do this, help me, help me to act different to what I've always done up until now. I want to be able to see a change in my heart when it comes to anger. Um, God, give me wisdom. What does that look like for you? How, how do you know you have wisdom once God has given it to you? You pray for wisdom. Well, how do you know you got it? Have you been specific? God, um, help me. Well, give me wisdom so that the next time someone asks me about an issue in their life, I actually have an answer. And I can actually, God, help me next time when someone comes to me with a problem I can go to the Bible. I can go to the Bible and go. Oh yeah, um, in in um, Mark chapter nine, there's God. Help me, help me to be that quick. Give me wisdom. That is, that I may answer my brother, my sister when they have a problem, and I can help them. Um, give me wisdom. The next time that my kids ask a question, I have an answer, and it. Help me, Lord, to see my answer be acted out after I've told them. Meaning this, God, give me wisdom uh, so that when my, when my daughter or my son asks me about something, I'm able to give that and help me a few days later to see them actually put that in, put that in action. Man, that would be exciting. Then you'll know, right? Then you'll know that... Um, your prayers are being answered. Because when you say, give me wisdom, that, what, what does that even mean? So be specific in your desired state, but, um, uh, but make your desired state your desiring state. Um, so anyway, um, your, your desired state, wherever that is now, is governed by your desiring state. So what, what, you, what you're going to end up praying about is, is always governed by the, the state in which you are praying. And so be careful of that. Romans 8 and verse 26. Uh, to close, Romans 8 and, well, two more. Romans 8 and verse 26. The Bible says, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit it itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Um, a lot of the times, once you start getting in this, um, being more specific, you're going to wonder, like, actually, God, I don't even know what this means. When I ask for wisdom, I, I really, I want wisdom. I want happiness. I want joy. I don't ac actually know what that looks like, because I know it's not just more money or a bigger house. Or I, don't, I don't actually know what to ask for God. And um, the Bible says that God will help you with that. The problem is we don't ever see God, help, the Spirit helping us with these, how we ought, because we don't go granular enough. We say, bless, bless this missionaries. Help me to be successful. Uh, help me be a better Christian. And we're not digging to the point where the Spirit goes, oh, let, help, let, me, let me help you dig. Let me help you dig. Let me help you get to that specific. And I think, I think, I have confidence. I think that God will help you in uh, determining what those things we ought to pray. Um, the last one is Psalm 37 and verse 4. You know this one. Hopefully this will maybe make sense more. Delight thyself also in the Lord. And he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. You know what he's saying? He's saying, delight thyself, meaning get to a place where you're, you're in the right state of mind. Because when you're in this place, 
you're not going to ask amiss. You're not going to ask wrong. And then he can give you the desires of your heart. Because no longer are you down here going, God, I want that over there. That's the state I want over there, the desired state. You're, you're up here now going, God, I want that over there instead of that. I don't, I don't want that. I want this. And God's, God says, yeah, all right. Um, <clears throat> so uh, be specific about your desired state. Be sanctified in your desiring state and make your desiring state your desired state. Oh, there's too many states. But um, let's uh, return to the state of New South Wales. And um, should I pray now? Okay, let's, let's pray and then we'll, we'll uh, do requests. God, um, we all could uh, use um, some more of this wisdom, Lord, from your word. Um, again, Lord, to the point where we can um, share um, your word to, to others and to make right decisions when, the, um, when a heartache comes and hardship comes, Lord. We ask that you'd help us with our prayer life. We pray, Lord, that you'd help us to be more specific and help us, Lord, to be in the right state of mind as we ask for things of you, Lord, so that we could see you work in our life in Jesus' name. Amen.